Hello and welcome to a quick and easy approach to running cluster analysis on Excel. I've previously set up this spreadsheet but we'll show you how it is put together. So basically I have four variables. I've just labeled them A, B, C and D. And I have 100 observation of each. So I've just got some random data there. So this is my data set that I'm working with. Um, first thing I do is try and standardize this data. Now, I've typically got a marketing background, so I use data that is often scaled from a survey on a 1 to 9 scale or something. So I've got consistency in the data. But if you're using scientific data or, or some of some of the physical observation, you're going to have quite a variety of numbers here. So you don't want to um, affect your, your clustering because of the scale of the numbers. So what we do is we construct Z scores. To do this, we firstly work out the mean. So this one's just the mean or the average of D. So it's all, all of column D. So it's all of these here. So I've just worked out the, the mean of, of each column of my actual data. So the mean of that, the mean of that. And then I also work out standard deviation using, again, these are just using Excel formulas for the population, because this is my uh, total data set, uh, depending if you've got a sample, perhaps you can use sample data, but I prefer, I'm assuming this is the full data I have, and this is the uh, population standard deviation that I tend to use. So again, I'm using the same column D, so I'm picking up average and standard deviation for each variable. Then I just use the standardization formula. So I'm actually going to put that in for you. So I just hit equals as you can see up the top what happens and it brings up that as an option. So what do I want to look at? It's that's my variable and I want to standardize it relative to the mean and relative to the standard deviation. And that's all I have to do. And then I would copy that across so you can see as I go across these Z scores um, are just the same. What I do is I actually insert the dollar sign uh, in the mean and in the standard deviation so that way I could just copy it down. So this way this provides me the data, same data, but it's just been standardized. So it's on the same scale, basically. And I can use this for my uh, analysis. Okay, what I then do is set up some what we call cluster centers or anchors or starting points. Uh, I'm going to use this, this, this data here. So what I've done is I've constructed a, a lookup table. I've called my data uh, up here. I can't see it, but data3. Okay, so this actually data set here, which is the Z scores. And I said, okay, look up uh, cell one on the, on the, and then give me the second one across. So it comes here, first one, second one, first column, second column. And it picks up, as you can see, those numbers there are just cluster or observation one, cluster two, observation two. And, I, and they just copy the data up. If I change this to say I want the center to be anchor 10 or observation 10, which is this row here, I can just type in the 10 there and up it comes. Basically, it should make no difference of which anchors you initially select because what you're getting uh, the program or Excel to do is determine what are the five best. Now, I'm using five. Uh, clusters, you can use more or less, but the same principles applied. I've set it up to be to be five clusters. Okay, once I've got that, I then come across and go, okay, these are my five clusters. And what I wanted to do is, and I'll, I'll pick one that's here, that doesn't have a zero in it, is I want, I'm going to use this formula. So this is basically, looks, looks a nice easy formula for Excel to use, but it's just summing the difference between each point. So it says for I16, 
which is these ones. I want you to compare those to cluster 1, which is I've designated at this stage to be the first point. So I'm just comparing that to that one there, and each one is just squared. So that minus that squared, that minus that squared, and it gives me that total. So I, I then do the same thing for cluster 2. You can see the dollar signs have been inserted. If I pick up this one, it says fix it at, at I to L. So fix it there. But, and then fix J uh, across there. So as I, what I can do is then copy that, that, that down. Okay, and, that, and it continues down. So as we go down, you can see what it changes. Go down one, it changes the row, but doesn't change the top situation. As I go across, I'll go across now. Keeps the, the row the same, but it moves it a uh, down one. So basically, this one here compares to that that one, my first cluster. The second one compares to that one. Third one compa compares to that one. So all of this is doing is providing uh, sum of squared difference. Okay, and what we do, we do that all the way down. And then we go, okay, what's the minimum? Or I could do a match um, a match formula in Excel, but I, I just like to see what the minimum is. And then the sum of these minimums is here. That's our sum of squared error. And that's what we're trying to get to minimize. Our, our job is to pick five clusters, or the program in Excel to pick five clusters which minimize the total difference between uh, the data and which which cells they're closest to, or what clusters they're closest to. Okay, so what happens is, I guess, oh yes, I have done the match one here. What it does is, uh, can you match S11? Well, let's, again, let's pick something that's, that's, uh, that's here. So we've got some blank numbers. I'll explain the blank numbers in a second. So match S16 which is that number, to where it fits in here. So it's the second one, so it gives me the second answer. This one here matches the fifth one, one, two, three, four, five, so it gives me five. So I can just say, you'll cluster one, you'll cluster two, you'll cluster five, at this stage. The reason these are zeros is that's because I've set that to be our, our seed or our anchor. So it should match up to these numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4 should have lengths, and 10 I've just added. If I, 0, if I, if I change that to 7, then 7 should have a 0 there. So I'll just do that now. Okay, so that's all that's doing. Once I have that, I am set to run the, the solver to work it out. So what I go to is data, and solver's off my screen, so I'll come across for you. That's no, not going to come. So you should bring up Solver. If you don't have it, you'll need to insert it. Um, and you use that through the options, but I'll bring it up. Here's your Solver menu. Just bring this up. What we're trying to do is this cell here, which is our sum of errors, all, this sums all of these minimums. And basically what I want to do is set it to minimum, and I want to change those cells. So please change the starting clusters. What are the five starting points which are most representative of the data? And I've added in constraints here. So these ones here, they've got to be in the range of 1 to 100, because I have 1 to 100 variables, so you can't get past it. And it has to be an integer, so it has to be an exact number. Don't give me 2.5 or something like that, so give me an actual number. So a number comes here, and they pick up that. Okay, I've ticked that box, and I've selected evolutionary. So you've got to do that. And then, if I bring that up, you've got to solve, and away we go. Now, that'll take a little bit while to uh, calculate, but what it's doing is it's just crunching through these numbers, thinking about, okay, if I make that 5, what would happen? If I make that 7, what would happen? And the job is to end up with that number being minimized. So I just pause while it does its calculation. When Excel has finished uh, calculating using Solver, which should take around one minute or so, 
you should see this box pop up and you just keep and hit OK. And what you should see is these anchor points. We now have five starting segments and these are quite different from below. Well, we started with one to, to, to four and, and number 10. So those numbers have changed uh, quite significantly and we have a much lower sum of squared error. So what we now do to finish off, we go through and say, OK, you are assigned to cluster 1. Over here for cluster 1, tell me all the ones in that cluster. So if that is equal to 1, then give me the original starting data. So we go over here, we can see that data, 2, 14, 33, 50, has been copied across. The next one is in cluster 3 so it's been picked up over here so all this is a series of if statements if the cluster number is equal to cluster 1, 2, 3 then give me that data so 1's there, 2's there and over here we've got the uh, over the other way we've got 4's and 5's etc what we then do up here is work out the mean for each of these. So that and we've got our the middles of our clusters. So you can see cluster one has a mean of two for the first variable, fourteen for the second. So that's our elements of our cluster, our measurements, cluster two, cluster three, etc. So basically that's all there is to it. I've got another video that steps through all the mechanics of doing it properly, but this is a much faster way once it's set up. Obviously it looks a bit complicated, but once you set up, it's just the data, do a z-score, uh, set up a lookup table, and then um, use the that formula to work out the sum of square difference, and then set up our solver using that, and away we go.